And with just over two weeks to go before the New South Wales election, the state opposition appears to be in deep trouble, with the latest polls showing the 12-year-old Labor government expected to win quite easily despite its own deep unpopularity. In what seems to be becoming commonplace at state level, regardless of widespread discontent with Maurice Yemmer's government, the opposition leader Peter Debnam has so far failed to win hearts and minds with his mixed bag of promises. Deborah Cornwall reports. This is an attempt to, to paint him as, you know, Debnam, Texas Ranger. Yeah, don't you think that Peter Debnam would do better as an alternate Premier if when he was in front of the cameras he put a few more clothes on? <laughs> He's a fellow who likes beaches, well, so do most of Australians. Good on him. Peter Debnam's splashy swimwear sent ripples as far as London this week. The Times snidely observing the New South Wales opposition leader was as cut and buffed as the new James Bond. Well, it's, it's me. I mean, I'm, you know, I, I am um, into exercise every day and uh, I suppose um, the media became interested in that angle. But just over two weeks out from election day, the New South Wales opposition leader is in the last gasp of the campaign. And if the latest polls are any indication, he'll need more than an oxygen tank to revive him, with just one in every four voters prepared to back him as Premier. Um, look, I can't explain it. I suppose I, I'll leave it up to other people to explain it. The feeling on the hustings is very strong, um, both towards me and uh, very warm, and also to our candidates, and uh, we feel as though we're making a lot of progress. I think that Peter has so far failed to charm the electorate. He's very genial, easygoing, generous and considerate on a one-to-one -one level. But in terms of the media, yes, there is a certain intensity, a certain narrow-eyed look. But perhaps the most remarkable thing about the polls is not so much how badly the Liberals are doing, but how well Labor is faring. I think he's, he's a bit symptomatic of the Liberal Party at a state level right around the country, and that is not being able to lay a glove on the Labor leader for three years or four years and then try and do it in the last four weeks of an election campaign. Just pathetic there tends to be an expectation that the government is just going to implode and they're going to be handed government on a platter. That doesn't happen. Mr Coppers, you must have some... Just two months ago, the Yemmer government appeared to be on its last legs, rocked by a series of ministerial scandals and 12 years of pent-up voter rage over the state's crumbling infrastructure and an economy on the brink of recession. Peter had the government right on the back foot. Well, he didn't. The government had itself on the back foot. A minister is dragged out of bed, taken to court and charged with child sex offences. I thought it was a tsunami that would wash across the Labor government and sweep them out to sea and we'd never hear or see any of them again. And then I think a brain snap occurred. Armed with allegations from a pedophile, Peter Debnam took a monumental gamble, launching a smear campaign against the Attorney-General Bob Debus which anywhere. backfired badly. And this is my challenge to you, you grub. Walk 15 paces out there and say it again. Say it now. It cost the opposition critical momentum and raised alarm within the Liberal Party about the former Naval Lieutenant's leadership style. You're described by colleagues as a bit of a lone wolf. Um, you don't like to take advice. And that may have cost you dearly in the Debus matter. Look, I've seen those comments in the media. I don't know where the comments came from, but I don't accept them. But Peter Debnam was always going to be up against it. His elevation to the leader's job just 18 months ago marked a major crisis in the New South Wales Liberal Party. The former leader, John Brogdon, had just attempted suicide after resigning in disgrace. I think Peter Debnam inherited a mud house, and he's had to build it up. I think everywhere around this country that the oppositions could benefit from, from some new blood. The last time Liberals won an election uh, at a state level in Australia was in 1997 in South Australia. Uh, that's 10 years since they've won. That's a terrible uh, record. No one would want that. And I think 
liberal hardheads around the country continue to really worry about what they can do at a state level um, to win an election. Peter Debnam has scored some points in the campaign, notably his decision to champion recycled drinking water, leaving the Yemmer government flat-footed with its highly unpopular desalination plant. Fine, no problem. But as the election inches nearer, there have been even more stumbles. From the sacking of Central Coast candidate Brenton Pavia for sending dirty text messages... And God help us if one joke about having sex with goats is enough to get you out of New South Wales politics to a press conference last week where Peter Debenham tried to spruik the benefits of his proposed property tax cuts to mum and dad investors. And we want to talk to two people today who really do feel that impact of the heavy tax burden in New South Wales. The problem was Michelle and Robert Banning owned eight property investments in all, not exactly Struggle Street. It was a gaffe that played straight into the Labor spin. Peter Debenham, the silver tail, who was out of touch with ordinary voters. This is just nonsense. Mr Debenham is from the same classic Australian lower middle class background that most of us are from. It's Labor have set out to, to paint you as a sort of stitched up, moneyed, white bread kind of guy, the member for Vaucluse. Oh look, I mean the Labor Party have tried to demonise me and, that, and that's been their defence I suppose, is to try and uh, de deflect attention from all their troubles and their woes over 12 years and uh, say look at Peter Debenham, uh, isn't he terrible? The opposition's last sprint to the polls may well be boosted when they finally start running their TV ads. But with campaign funds at an all-time low, so far the party has been forced to make do with a bit of free advertising on the web. But if something is rotten, it's rotten. And when A message which has already been drowned out by Labor's all-singing, all-dancing spoiler blog. I think every election is winnable, but it's up to the people of New South Wales. It's, it's really up, it's a democracy, it's what do they want on the day. We'll know that in just over two weeks, that report from Deborah Cornwall. Over the years, tens of thousands...